I'm Jennifer, and welcome to Killer Cafe Podcast, a podcast all about killers, crime, as well as everything spooky, scary, and sometimes skeletons. It has been over a week since Richard Alexander Murdaugh was tried and sentenced in the case of Maggie and Paul Murdaugh. With him getting life, it has been a wild ride to get here. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't seem like the end, but only the beginning. Since the prosecution seemed to have forgotten why they were there in the first place, I wanted to talk about the real winners in this case, which is Paul and Maggie Myrtle. But before we talk about the victims, please remember to be kind, courteous, and show mercy towards the family as they are dealing with another loss in the family because at the end of the day, it is another loss. Margaret Kennedy Brandstetter was born on September 15th of 1968 in Nashville, Tennessee to parents Kennedy Hubbard Brandstetter and Terry Lee Brandstetter, also known as Maggie. As I was digging through, not much was said about her earlier years, most just starting out when she hit college. She attended college in and University of South Carolina, where she had met her husband, Richard Alexander Myrtle. They did later marry on August 14th of 1993 and started what they thought would be the rest of their lives together. Maggie then gave birth in 1996 to her first son, Richard Alexander Myrtle Jr., or Buster, as many people call him. And then she later gave birth again to her second son in 1999. As many fans and friends and family have said, Maggie loved and cared about these boys more than anything and often became a second mom to so many of their friends before her passing. Now that we know about the first victim, let's talk about the second. Paul Terry Murdaugh was born on August 14th of 1999 in Hampton, South Carolina to Margaret and Richard Murdaugh. Paul was known all around by his friends and family as someone who was outgoing, crazy, and didn't always take authority well. He was wild, free, and loved being outdoors, enjoying spending time at their hunting lodge with his father and brother, as well as being a junior at the University of South Carolina. And according to his obituary, Paul never met a stranger and had an abundance of friends. He was always eager to lend a helping hand to anyone in need. No one was more loving and genuine than Paul, and because of this, his personality was one of a kind. Unfortunately, we do have to talk about a little bit about the past before we jump into the beginning of the end of their story. On February 23rd of 2019, 20-year-old Paul was involved in a boat crash with five of his friends involving one of them, 19-year-old Mallory Beach, being killed. All were ejected out of the boat, but unfortunately Mallory was not found until she was deceased later on. Paul was facing three felony BUIs, boating under the influence, criminal charges with this incident, and he was out on a $50,000 bond. In March, Mallory's mom started a lawsuit against Paul his father, his brother, and more due to them allowing his drinking and more. This lawsuit was one of many his father is currently dealing with. Now, let's talk of the night of the murders. On June 7th, 2021, Maggie and Paul were reported to have headed to the kennels on their hunting grounds to check on the dogs. Maggie, having been gone for a while, at the beach house that they owned, loved the dogs and wanted to check in on them. Paul and Maggie supposedly drove from the house to the kennels in Paul's truck. Alex, not wanting to go, decided to take a nap and head to check on his mother. According to Alex, he had texted and called Maggie, but never got an answer from her. Once returning, he found Maggie and Paul shot in the yard close to the kennels, quickly calling 911, and then the events of everything started to unfold. What we know of what happened is only of t Alex's testimony at that time, and due to the fact that Maggie and Paul were dead upon arrival of the paramedics. 
the details are grisly and horrifying and as the defense like to use butchered by them multiple times but their deaths were horrible and unfortunately we now know the true circumstances of what happened if you have been watching the trial then you know that they have video and evidence of Alex being there moments before Paul and Maggie were murdered and by the jury he was found guilty on four counts, two of murder and two of the assault with the guns. The jury only took less than three hours to deliberate and come back and the sentencing was the next day on March 3rd of 2023. It's been a wild and crazy ride and I cannot imagine the pain and trauma that Maggie's family went through and not only Maggie's family but Paul, the rest of Paul's family and his brother Buster as well. And they're rehashing everything and they open up new wounds and unfortunately the end is, well, not here like we had hoped. The media is still harassing the family, mainly Buster, as they've been seen to try to take pictures through his window and unfortunately I don't think with the appeal starting up that it's going to get much easier. If you do want a full breakdown of the case, of the 28 day court case, please go check out some amazing people across this platform on YouTube. Emily D. Baker, the lawyer you know, and Law and Lumber did a beautiful job. Emily did um, the court case every single day and live streamed and talked about it and gave her two cents throughout the case. And as the jurors are now stepping forward and talking about what happened, she is also covering that as well as much more. They are all lawyers and they're doing an amazing job breaking it down and letting us, people who don't always see this day to day, understand it. But with all that being said, please let me know down in the comments what you feel, what you want to hear on next, and I will see you all in a few days with the next one. Bye!